Hey guys, how's it going? Buster Photo here with another camera review and how to. Today we're comparing the Canon P versus the Leica M3. Two beautiful 1950s rangefinder cameras. Uh, so they have some similarities and some differences and we're going to go over a little bit of that. We're also going to talk about the price differences between these two cameras and maybe that'll help you in deciding which one uh, you should get. Now these are both my personal copies. I have uh, both of them with their respective uh, light, coupled light meters, coupled to the shutter speed. Um, this one, with the Leica, I have the Summicron 50mm DR, as it's sometimes referred to, DR for dual range, with the correct goggles. And with the Canon, I have the 50mm 1.8 on the body today. So some of the similarities with these two cameras is they're both, of course, rangefinder cameras. Um, they both have different frame lines for different lenses. The Leica having frame lines for 50, 90, and 135, and the Canon P having frame lines for uh, 50, 135. The main difference being with the Canon P, the frame lines are always showing, just like this. If you were to look through the viewfinder of the Canon P, they're just always showing. Kind of cluttered if you ask uh, certain people's opinions on it. And with the Leica M3, you have individual frame lines for individual lenses. And they couple automatically, you, you don't have to change anything. If your lens is working properly, you just pop that lens on there and the corresponding frame line will show up. If you wanted to use any other different lenses, you would have to use a uh, external viewfinder. I have a Canon one here, I don't have a Leica one, but just so you can get some idea of what we're talking about. I have the light meter on the camera now, but uh, you would pop this on top. This is a Canon uh, 35 millimeter um, external viewfinder uh, that came that comes with my Canon 35 millimeter lens. Another uh, thing to note with these two cameras is the Leica M3 uses an M mount, Leica M mount, where the Canon uses a thread mount, which is also a Leica mount, but it's just something that the Canon went with. Um, during that time. They're thinking probably being that when the Canon M3, the, sorry, the Leica M3 came out, there was still a lot of uh, great Leica thread mount lenses out, so Canon probably decided we're gonna, we're gonna uh, capitalize on that, and you can use all of those old Leica lenses with this camera. But of course, Canon also made their own cameras. I'm sorry, their own lenses for the Leica thread mount. Uh, one advantage for the Leica, when, now that we're speaking of lenses, is the Leica can use the, I'm sorry, the M mount uh, lenses, but it, it can also use all of its old thread mount lenses. And all you would need is some kind of thread mount adapter. Uh, I don't have an original Leica one, but I do have these Japanese Rayqua ones, which are of excellent quality, and I highly recommend you get these uh, instead of the $10 ones, because I've tried the $10 ones and they are terrible. Uh, and especially with some of these older Leica thread mount lenses, this is a Canon one of course, but with any of the thread mount lenses they have a infinity lock and they won't work uh, with certain adapters. With these Rayqual version 3 adapters, uh, they work perfectly. Uh, let's talk about um, operation. Uh, I have an older Leica M3 here, which is a double throw or a double stroke, two strokes, fire, two strokes, fire. With the Canon P, it was just a single stroke, which is, um, there's film in here now, so I can't show you the full stroke of it, but yeah, the Canon P would be single stroke. Uh, what else is different here? Uh, the, the way these uh, load film are incredibly different. If you're not familiar with uh, any of the Leica M's, they have, they usually, um, have a base plate that comes out. So it's, with the Leica M3 specifically, you had to remove this little spool, this barn door opens, load the film onto the spool and put the canister here at the same time, slide that in, close the door, make sure that your film was uh, on the spools properly, close the door, return the base plate, what is it doing? Oh, here we go. Return the base plate, uh, boom. And then if you did it correctly, uh, your little uh, rewind knob circles should turn and then that'd be fine. With 
quite a process with the Leica M3. Um, one of the things I kind of, I wouldn't say don't like, but it's, I wish not, well, you're using the Leica M3, so you're choosing to load the film that way. With the Canon P, it's much, much easier if you're, especially if you're used to uh, newer 35 uh, millimeter cameras. Uh, this one has film in it, but I'll I have a extra Canon 7S here. I'm sorry, Canon 7, which has the same exact operation. You just open the bottom, turn the first lock, put your finger on there, the second lock, and it is a much easier, uh, more traditional way of uh, loading 35 millimeter film. Uh, this is probably what most people are used to, if you remember using cameras from uh, you know the 90s or. You know, even if you're new to film, that's probably what you've seen more of this than the the Leica version. Um, both have a self-timer charge, which is a couple of seconds, just enough time to get back to your friends. Um, the main difference you would find between these two nowadays is the price. Um, a Canon P, the Canon P's are, seem to be getting a lot more popular. Uh, we're filming this in 2021, but... Throughout 2020, I saw that the lenses were, the cameras were getting much more popular and the prices were, were rising quite a bit. But as of now, for a really, really nice Canon P body, P body, P body, I wouldn't pay more than uh, 200, and that's pretty high considering a couple of years ago, you could, you could find a Canon P body for like a hundred bucks easy. Uh, the lenses seem to be, slightly rising in prices too uh you can find i mean they range depending on which lenses they are but for the 50 millimeter 1.4 which i have a copy of here um the prices seem to be going up and up and up uh last i checked a, a 1.4 or 1.2 usually goes for like two to three hundred bucks with the 1.8 being a little cheaper um and of course if if you've even looked up anything like uh the prices for the leicas Leica anything never goes down in price. It always just keeps climbing. Uh, as of now, Leica M3 bodies were maybe a couple years ago, two years ago maybe, they were like 800 to 900 bucks for a really good body. Now you're seeing like a thousand to two thousand for a really nice body. And if we're talking mint M3 that's never been used, people are paying three thousand to four thousand dollars. So for the price you would pay for a Leica M3 body. You can get like three or four <laughs> Canon P's with a good lens. And honestly, you would be hard pressed to uh, tell the difference side by side of a picture taken with a Leica lens or a Canon lens. And that's being incredibly honest. I've compared the two and I mean, I've read other places that 1950s uh, Japanese Canon uh, lens, LTM lenses were right there. I mean, right there with the Canon stuff. Um, that might not that might not be the case a couple of years down the line after the 50s, um, but definitely during that time, the they were the Japanese were right there with the image quality with the Leica glass. Um, so why would you buy one over the other? If price is a determining factor, the Canon, the Canon P is comparatively dirt cheap for entering into a Leica system. You get the rangefinder experience. You can even use Leica glass on this camera if you find the Leica thread mount versions. Um, why would anyone get the Leica M3? Uh, the Leica M3, if I mean, if price is a determining factor, you're buying a Leica M3 because you want the best quality ever. And I don't mean glass, because glass is all subjective. You ask 10 different people, who makes the best glass, you're gonna get 10 different answers. Um, but they're, they definitely made excellent, outstanding glass. But where you get, when I, when I, when I mean quality, is like quality in everything. I, I mean, this, well, especially with the M3, it's like a brass, like, goddess. Like, everything is brass, everything is machined to perfection. I mean, even this lens, my, my Summicron 50 millimeter, like, this arguably is, in my opinion, the best lens Leica ever made. I mean, it, it looks like some kind of scientific tool, and it, mine works flawlessly. Uh, thankfully, I had a uh, Yuxin Yi in Massachusetts completely CLA this one for me. The light meter doesn't work. I didn't send him the light meter, but he completely restored the body lens and everything. And yeah, if you're, if you're going for a Leica because 
you, I mean, you you could take. The, <laughs> it's kind of hard to justify a Leica, but you you can take as as good of a picture with the Canon P as you could with this uh, camera and lens combo. But honestly, for me, I think I really wanted the Leica M3 because it is just a a, a beautiful machine. Like. No, Leica never, maybe now with the Leica MP or the Leica MA, did Leica really just go balls to the wall? We're going to just over engineer everything and, you know, make a perfect, beautiful machine camera. Uh, perfect, you know, subjective because there's certainly some things that people might not like about the Leica M3. But if you're just getting into rangefinders, I would say get the Canon P. Um, they're built beautifully, brass everywhere, um, excellent, excellent quality lenses, and who knows, you know, maybe down the line, you can get both, like I did, but, um, that's just, you know, a slight comparison between these, uh, two incredibly beautiful cameras, um, they both take beautiful pictures, it's, you know, it's just what your flavor is, uh, during that time that you're looking for, uh, for a film camera. But uh, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope this was in some way informative and some way entertaining. Uh, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please meet me down in the comments. I try to answer every comment I get. Uh, if I said anything that you disagree with, I also like having discussions. Or if I said something that was totally, absolutely wrong, please also let me know. But uh, anyways, thank you for stopping by and watching my video and uh, have a nice day.